With everything going on with Bitcoin's price action at the moment, a few people have been asking whether or not the Bitcoin whales are buying or selling. In today's video, we're going to be addressing just that. We'll be taking a look at the on-chain metrics for BTC, taking a look at what the Bitcoin sharks are doing, what the whales are doing, what the uh, larger kind of mega kraken sized whales are doing, and basically you know, seeing whether or not we should be following their actions and basically following what they are doing right now. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash a like button. If you're new, subscribe, and let's take a look at what's going on with Bitcoin. So this is a, a chart that you guys probably would have seen a number of times already. Uh, this basically just shows uh, basically Basically, Bitcoin's price action across the years with the US elections kind of overlaid over the top. And if we take a look at this briefly before we get into the whale activity, you can see some pretty clear patterns, right? Starting all the way back in the very early days. Uh, so the election year of 2012, in 2013, we had a bull market peak. In the election year of 2016, we saw the bull market peak in 2017. In the election year of 2020, we saw the bull market peak here in 2021. And of course, 2024 is an election year, which means 2025, there's a high probability it's a bull market peak, right? Um, history tells us that every single election year, the year after we have a bull market peak, right? That's happened every single time for BTC's price action. So 2025 is likely to be a bull market peak. What then is going on when it comes to the Bitcoin whales. Well, uh, for that, what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our charts, our on-chain data, right? So here we have on-chain metrics for, for BTC, right? This is available to our All Access and Trader Plus members over on our website. Um, and basically, you have the different kind of projects that you might want to take a look at the on-chain data for. So Bitcoin, Cardano, Chainlink, Dogecoin, Ethereum, uh, Litecoin, XRP, and so forth. Uh, in today's video, we're obviously taking a look at BTC. Now, this is the overview. It basically just just tells us things like what the all-time high is, uh, the date of the all-time high. Um, it shows the all-time low, the date of the all-time low, uh, at least from the data that I could mine. Um, we are currently down 18.27% from its all-time high, at least at the point when the data was refreshed. Um, the circulating supply, for example, is uh, 19.7 million, 21's maximum and so forth. You can go into network analysis here as well. We're just going to briefly just go through this before we get into the whale stuff. Um, so here, obviously, you have circulating supply, total supply, max supply, the market cap, which obviously is hard to read, but basically 1.19 tr uh, trillion. Um, the realized market cap is quite an important one, right? $623.7 billion. So you can argue that it's practically half or almost half uh, of the actual market cap. And the realized market cap is basically the price that was paid for a Bitcoin when it last moved. So it's basically a timestamp of when BTC was moved from one place to another. And as such, uh, that basically takes a snapshot of the price at that time. And it tries to build in a realized market cap. That means that essentially, Although, um, kind of theoretically, I guess, that $623 billion has flown, uh, flowed into Bitcoin, not $1.19 trillion, right? And people don't understand how market cap works. They think that that's how much it's worth. It's not. It's a simple calculation. And again, there's two calculations here. One is more reliable than the other. The realized market cap is more reliable than the actual market cap. Um, so don't let market cap trip you up. I know it does. A lot of people, they don't understand it. But for the most part, you can see here that less than half of the, well, actually a little bit over half of the actual market cap that you see on you know, coin market cap, for example, is actually realized, which means uh, it's kind of highly inflated and is not real. Um, the addresses, there's 53 million. This is really interesting stuff as well. I get into my geek mode here because uh, 53 million addresses, that's a really big number. And we're going to talk about that in a second as well. Um, now, active addresses in the last 24 hours is 643,000. Uh, active addresses that received were 426,000 and 430,000 addresses sent. There's overlap between those two, of course. So some people send and receive, uh, and there's a pocket of people that are only sending and only receiving. Transactions, um, 40, uh, 486,000 transaction count. Um, fees in the last 24 hours in USD were $356,000. Um, that's basically six uh, Bitcoin approximately. 
um, 125 blocks added, block height and so forth. Inflation rate is 0.0024% uh, daily. It's 0.87% uh, yearly. Uh, new issuance, 390 Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. Um, and of course, that's uh, $22.7 million. Um, really interesting stuff just by taking a look at the overview of Bitcoin's, um, you know, kind of on-chain data. But 53 million total addresses. This is important. Remember that 53 million. Let's go into the wallet analysis then. So this is the kind of stuff that takes a look at um, how many wallets uh, hold X amount of Bitcoin, right? This is what we talk about for, for years. Now, whales uh, are basically considered anyone who has over a thousand Bitcoin. Okay. So it's important that we understand what that looks like. A uh, hundred Bitcoin we've dubbed sharks. 10 Bitcoin I called um, dolphins. Uh, one Bitcoin is your shrimp. Uh, and then, of course, you get into like really small, insignificant numbers. Now, the reason that this is really important is that 53 million wallets, right? 24 million of them hold more than 0.001 Bitcoin. So dust, right? We call it dust. Um, so that means that out of the 53 million accounts, there's basically less than half of them that actually hold Bitcoin, right? So 53 million accounts, great. You have all that many addresses on your on your chain. It's fine, you can have that, but only 24 million of them actually hold some form of Bitcoin. As we go up the records here and we go up to 0 0.01 Bitcoin, only 12.6 million accounts or addresses actually hold that much Bitcoin, right? Which is 1% of a Bitcoin. Um, so really interestingly here that we can already take down that 53 million ad addresses to 12.6 million that hold just 1% of a Bitcoin. When we start talking about 10% of a Bitcoin, it drops to 4.5 million addresses. So we can already see that as the scale of things go, there's actually really not that many people holding Bitcoin in, in a native sense. Now, don't get me wrong, there might be more on exchanges. Exchange wallets aren't really technically Bitcoin wallets and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you, we can be a little bit mindful about you know whether or not there's a lot of people just holding Bitcoin on exchanges. But when it comes to the actual addresses, we can take down the 53 million addresses down quite considerably. Now, we don't really care too much about 0.001. Uh, we kind of care a little bit around 1% of a Bitcoin. The higher the price of Bitcoin goes, the more important these wallets will become, of course. 10% um, of a Bitcoin is also quite important because it's a sizable retail investment, I guess. Um, and what's really interesting about this is you can kind of see over the years how this has changed, right? How many wallets have expanded and so forth. But you can also take the look at you know what it's like this time last year this time six months ago three months ago two months ago one month ago 14 days seven days and one day and so we can see patterns of behavior and how they're changing. So for the wallets that hold 0.01 Bitcoin, in the last year, they've increased by 2.27%. In the last six months, they've increased by 1.97%. Last three months, 0.73%. Last two months, 0.96%. 30 days, 0.51%. Basically growth across the board for the smaller kind of sized wallets. As we go up to 10% of a Bitcoin, um, we can see that there's 4.5 million addresses and uh, in the last year, they're up 2.31. Uh, in the last six months, 1.27. Last three months, 0 0.74. Last 60 days, 0 0.63. Uh, last 30 days, 0 0.09. So you can see that there's still growth growing on here. So there's still retail investors looking to accumulate little bits of Bitcoin as they go. As we get into the one Bitcoiners, uh, the one Bitcoiners are the kind of aspiration of many retail investors. They want to hold at least one Bitcoin. They are still retail investors, um, but obviously as the price of Bitcoin Bitcoin gets higher and higher. This is going to become more of your kind of high net worth individual at some point in the future. Um, but at the moment, there's a million wallets that hold one Bitcoin. Okay, so 53 million total wallets, actually only 1 million of them hold more than one Bitcoin. Okay, so here we can see in the last year, it's down 0.46%. In the last six months, it's actually up 0.59%. Last three months, 0.33. Last 60 days, 0.33. And so you can see a little bit of growth most recently when it comes to retail investors buying or increasing their holdings up to at least one BTC. As we go up to 10 Bitcoin or more, this is where we talk about high net worth individuals, right, uh, who have sizable amounts of capital that they've kind of deployed into crypto. Um, and you can argue that maybe some of these people are traders as well. Uh, they kind of do fall into this bracket a little bit as well. Um, but for the most part, we're going to just call these high net worth individuals for now. Uh, we've called them and dubbed them dolphins uh, on the, the channel here at CC. 
So what do we see? Well, we see 153,000 wallets, right? So there's 153,000 wallets that hold more than 10 Bitcoin. They're considerably lower than the 53 million wallets that are you know, supposedly out there, right? And here we can see that in the last year, they're down 2.49%. And outside of that, the growth is really, really small. So there's not been a huge amount of high net worth individuals really looking at Bitcoin and coming into it. Now, of course, the ETFs do change these things quite considerably. Instead of holding Bitcoin, they can hold a share in an ETF. So the ETFs are now skewing on-chain data quite a bit um, because, you know, basically it's all going into uh, Coinbase custody, right? So it's one big wallet holding a chunk of Bitcoin. We'd have to obviously start to figure out how ways of bringing in the number of shares across all the different um, uh, ETFs and, and start basically bringing that into the analysis of uh, on-chain data. So it's a little frustrating. We don't have that uh, at this point, but you can see here that there's a significant decrease of uh, people actually holding BTC. Uh, they may have pivoted to, to shares in ETFs instead for all we know. But decrease nonetheless. In the last 30 days a decrease, last two weeks a decrease, last seven days a decrease. As we go up to 100 Bitcoin, uh, these guys I've likened in the past to just traders. We call them sharks. Uh, they basically do big swings in the market, come in and out of their positions. And you can see in the last uh, year, they're actually up 2.1%, six months, 1%, 90 days, 1.67%, 60 days, 1.66%. In the last couple of weeks or so, not so much activity has been going on, but they have been accumulating. If I zoom in here, in fact, actually what I'll do is I'll use this to basically bring in our data uh, to take a look at everything from 2020, just so you guys can see what that looks like in a little bit more detail. Okay, and then we'll zoom in here. So you can see some growth has been going on, right? Bitcoin reached a peak uh, up in March of 2020 for, um, and since then you can see these guys were coming out of their positions uh, and they've been starting to build those positions back up as we've kind of gone into those deeper corrections. So they started really kind of coming back in in July uh, as we were starting to kind of find Bitcoin at around $56,000. Uh, of course, the price action is still in around these areas and they have still been accumulating even all the way through August into September. Okay, so these are kind of trading activities are quite interesting. You can see that they accumulate and they kind of sell off into the pumps. And then as the decreases in price occur, they start to accumulate again. Okay, so again, price action is very, very interesting on the 100 BT, uh, BTC, the trading activity. Now we get into the whales. The whales are quite interesting in themselves as well. In the last 365 days, whale activity has increased by 3.23%. Okay, so while it's have increased uh, up to 2,076. So there's 2,076 wallets out there that hold more than 1,000 BTC. In the last 14 days, it's down by 0.19%. Outside of that, uh, there isn't a huge amount of activity. There's not big pockets of buying and there's not big pockets of selling. We can see that they did spike up back in January of 2024 as we started to see a bit of a surge to the upside ahead of the ETFs. But since February, they're actually down quite a bit. Okay, so wallet counts were in February 2,161 wallets that hold over 1,000 Bitcoin. They did decrease all the way down to a low in March of 2,105. Um, actually, it's a little bit lower than that, I believe. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find it. I probably can't. Uh, let me zoom in even further uh, so we can see that exact pinpoint right there. Um, 2,053 wallets, right? So they decreased as the price was coming up into its peak. They did a little bit of accumulation, but ultimately they haven't done anything else really massive since. Okay, so Bitcoin whales have been really not that active in the sense of what's been going on. Now, if I zoom out of this, you can really see that, that what they did back in 2021, uh, 2022, into the lows, they were selling off into the initial kind of moves to the upside over here as well. They only really started accumulating in January of 2025 in a kind of more reasonable way. Um, but again, they're still fighting these previous areas that they were at in 2022, kind of February area. So they haven't really done anything too major, um, not for quite a significant period of time. Now, as we crank this up again to 10,000 Bitcoin or more, there are 102 wallets that hold that much Bitcoin. And these guys are aggressively selling off. Okay, so we can see that there were 107 wallets that held over 10,000 Bitcoin a year ago. They are down 4.67%. 
180 days ago, there were 110 wallets and we are at 102, so we're down 7.27%. In the last 90 days, we're down 3.17, 60 days down 1.97. Since then, there's been a little bit of growth, but again, it's nothing too impressive. If we take a look at the, what's been going on, they were buying at the lows of around October of 2021. Um, and of course, they started selling off in November of 2022. So again, it looks quite interesting. That obviously, we're not saying the same people are buying and selling. Um, they were basically kind of you know in and out of these kind of positions, but they were accumulating into the November 2022 lows. Right? They were offloading, and they've been aggressively accumulating. Now, since they did finish off their accumulation back in November of 2022, they've been decreasing and they've been selling off. So as the price has recovered from November 2022, they've been taking profits off the table. Now, they haven't dropped down to the lows that they were at back in 2021, which was 81 wallets. But you can see that they are aggressively using the most recent liquidity uh, in the market to take advantage of. Now, I suspect that these guys are going to be buying back into their positions as we see the final pushes to the downside. And like we saw back in November 2022, they were not buying into what people believed were the bear market lows of June, for example, June 2022. Uh, a lot of people thought was the bear market bottom in. They weren't really necessarily buying into that so much. Um, they were buying into the uh, December, November, December kind of lows that we saw. Okay, there was a little bit of buying activity in early 2022, um, but essentially they were buying into the actual drops. And I suspect that's going to be more of the same. I think we're going to see these guys kind of buying into what happens next, which is going to be one of the bigger wealth transfers uh, in kind of crypto history, in my opinion. So I know it's kind of answer the question, uh, you know, what's going on with the Bitcoin whales? Uh, not terribly too much is going on with the Bitcoin whales. Uh, if we actually take a look at the data, it shows more that there's um, a lot more kind of activity going on with sharks, uh, the kind of traders swinging in and out of the market. There's a fair amount of activity in terms of selling pressure going on from the Kraken size wallets, the 10,000 Bitcoin or more wallet sizes. Um, but when it comes to the actual whales, not terribly too much is going on at the moment. We'll be keeping a close eye on that. Will we start seeing more growth or are these larger investors actually now just pivoting towards the ETFs rather than actually holding Bitcoin themselves. You guys can let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments down below or join us in our free Discord server. We would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't done so already, check out this video right here. It's not one you're going to want to miss.